Hey guys, back outside here. Look at me, I'm all like layered up right now. Um, it's definitely fall is in the air right now. It's uh, October 5th or 6th or whatever. So it's kind of the end of another season and it's back to wearing like pants and a few jackets for climbing. I'm out here at exit 38. I'm actually gonna meet up with a buddy uh, and we're just gonna go climb some routes for fun. Just something that seems kind of um, odd for me <laughs> nowadays to just climb them for fun but um, I managed to sneak a little bit of work in there because we're actually going to an area that I haven't been to with like a couple of two pitch multi-pitch climbs and um, I'm going to scout them out to see if they're a good place to bring some clients to for just days climbing or um, multi-pitch classes or so if you hire me to bring you out to exit 38 you know you may just go there. Anyway, on to the actual point of this video. Um, I wanted to do another talking point, which uh, is about a thing that, you know, most people have moved to, you know, this isn't exactly new news, but it is something that uh, I still see in mainly climbing gyms that haven't updated any of their uh, policy or their techniques in quite a while. And then um, just uh, people in general, if they learned a long time ago, I bring this up in all of my lead climbing courses, why we don't do this, because usually people that take those haven't, um, you know, they learned to top rope a while back. And then uh, in a lot of my multi-pitch classes, I talk about this as well. And uh, rock rescue classes, any sort of slightly upper level class, I talk about this to the students, uh, just so that way they can sort of get filled in on current events and um, current standards. So I'm going to, as the title suggests, I'm going to talk about why we no longer put a finishing knot after our figure eight. So I'm not going to talk about the bowlin or any other knots that people may use to tie in. That's a subject for another video. For now, we're sticking with the standard for most of the world with just that figure eight retrace. So let's shift down to crotch view and I'll show you what I mean. All right, so here I have two different ropes. Uh, on my left here with the yellow rope is kind of the newer standard. I say newer, but you know, it's like a, a decade old now that we've been uh, teaching this. But uh, on my right is the other standard, uh, which was the old one where I had same deal, figure eight with a finisher knot. Uh, you'll see different knots that people use, but this is the most common one is a double fisherman, or in this application, it's actually a double barrel knot. And, um, and so, yeah, like why have we gone from not doing this and doing just the figure eight without the finisher. So there are two main reasons why we tie a finisher knot after our figure eight. Um, one, and probably the biggest reason in my mind, is to prevent this original knot from coming untied because we control the tail with this knot. Yeah, so the idea is <clears throat> if, uh, if I didn't have the tail controlled, you know, uh, it could possibly, the rope could possibly slip back through and untie the knot for one. Uh, another reason that I've heard a lot less lately, but I have heard it from a number of people is that this knot is backing up the figure eight. And so there's kind of like two examples everyone thinks of. One is this, this knot explodes on you, you know, somehow explodes on you, then you have this knot backing you up, which obviously isn't doing anything because if any of the rope fails in this situation, this knot's not going to do anything but the more you know the more logical conclusion is if i tied this figure eight wrong and the rope slid through this knot will bunch down and then keep the keep myself in the rope and um so what they found with pole tests is uh this knot has been used quite a bit in other rope systems primarily the rope axis folks and usually they'll Maybe with thinner cord, they'll add a third loop, so they tie like a triple barrel. Uh, but I've also seen people use double barrels on thicker rope. Um, and that's uh, in that circumstance when it's a slip knot around a carabiner, they call it a scaffolding knot. There you go, this is what I mean. So just a double barrel tied around itself in a slip knot configuration, and then you stick something around it. Like in this case, I have a carabiner, or it could be my two hard points. So this knot is definitely strong enough to hold a person's weight and uh, hold a lot more force too. Um, pull tests on these knots generally result in failure of the material. 
so the whole thing fails at full strength, even though it has some pretty tight bends going on. So that argument of if you were to tie this figure eight wrong, this thing backs you up, actually holds some ground. But why on earth are you climbing if you can't even tie the figure eight knot correctly, right? This is the main knot that we trust. So if you're worried about tying this wrong, then just throw in a little knot afterwards. That's not really much of an argument. So um, that um, while that argument does hold some ground, it's not worth it to teach people a completely new knot to stick after this. And then what happens is um, many people tie this knot poorly also. So if you don't have quite enough tail, everyone goes for like this single overhand thing. And this is obviously not doing any of those original um, reasons of coming undone. It, it can easily come undone and start passing back through the knot. And if the if figure eight is tied incorrectly, this knot's not really gonna do too much for you. It's just gonna come undone. So if uh, you teach people that they have to have this and they act like it's a safety knot, when you tie it really loose like this, especially new climbers, and then it inevitably falls apart on you, then that's gonna definitely freak them out even though this knot's doing all the work. So if you are gonna tie a finisher knot, then keep it as close to this original knot as you can and uh, tie a good knot that's actually gonna stay tight around the rope and actually gonna hold so that way you actually have the benefits. Another thing I see a lot of people doing is they'll tie it way up higher on the strand. Okay, so now I have like a super huge long tail right here. And so you see people using this knot to get the tail out of the way, which makes sense. But then you get like a finisher knot tied away the hell up here. Look at that. So now not only is this not achieving any goal of the finisher knot, because it always slides back down and actually kind of helps the figure eight knot to come undone. I mean, actually, yeah, it would totally help the figure eight knot coming undone. But you get this giant loop in front of you that could easily get caught in a top rope anchor if you're top roping. If you're lead climbing, I don't even want to deal with that. I mean, you could easily clip this while lead climbing. And then um, also it just subtracts a ton of rope from the system. I mean, this is about 60 centimeters right here of rope, you know, about two feet of rope. Why would I subtract two feet of rope from my whole usable system? If I'm on that pitch that is a real rope stretcher, you know, this could matter quite a bit. So it's just very sloppy. And if you do get giant tails like this, I would encourage you to actually practice at tying your figure eight with the original figure eight with less tail in order to actually tie this thing correctly. Having the proper tail to start with your figure eight uh, actually depends mostly on the diameter of the rope. This one's a 9.4, this one's a nine mil. Um, and so the thinner the rope in diameter, um, the less tail you give yourself. Most of the time, with the ropes that I use all the time, I'm giving my tail, uh, myself a tail about this big. So the whole adage of going a full rope or full arm span of rope before you tie your figure eight is just kind of sloppy knot tying for one. And that's how we teach kids because they're only like this big in the first place. So uh, they need that extra rope. But adults, especially a six foot man, do not need the full arm span. I teach adults from here pulling out and that's already more rope than they need but um i guess this is just like my arm length so i'm going more for arm length for most of the more skinny single ropes that i use nowadays all right so back to crotch view one rope now um so yeah it's because of those reasons why we don't really tie a finisher knot after the figure eight there are other uh reasons that kind of result more from science rather than feelings which is always great when we make those leaps. Um, one is we've also noticed that people are kind of just tying a sloppy figure eight. And I realize I don't really have any videos talking about how to tie a figure eight clean and well-dressed. Um, so maybe I'll make that right afterwards. It'll be like a quick tip or something just to have like some specific video about it. But um, it's not really super hard to get a clean and well-dressed knot. But if we're doing something like, great, look at this. So would you know if I was actually tied in correctly with a knot like this? I mean, like I'd have some trouble and also just make me throw up in general from how poorly that knot's tied. But if I just organized the strands a little bit, turns out it's actually perfectly tied. So um, what we found is a lot of people kind of 
you know, spend more trouble trying to tie a good finisher knot and then they don't even focus on the actual knot that's holding you to the wall. So this increases emphasis on that specific figure eight that we lo are looking for. And then also the big reason is in recent poll tests, well, not so recent actually, but in poll tests, they found that this, the figure eight with one strand that's out is just as strong as the figure eight with this finishing move. Yeah, so that's kind of crazy, huh? But when you think about it, going back to the rigging world, we've tied figure eights like this forever in what we call a directional figure eight. So if you pull this, the rope will fail at full strength or whatever strength the normal figure eight fails at. So the figure eight actually already has a backup built in to itself. And um, that is also a huge argument for why we don't do that finisher knot afterwards anyway. I've moved to doing just the figure eight with the tail lately just because it is the standard and um, to model good behavior. But for a long time, I did tie the Yosemite finish to, uh, on my uh, rope. And um, I think that that's still good to use. I actually, um, this rope is pretty new. It's maybe about, um, I've only used it like four or five times now. And uh, when ropes are new, they have a really glossy sheath. And with thinner ropes, like a nine mil rope or something, uh, I do, <laughs> I will often do the Yosemite finish just because of how slick the rope is because I don't want it to then not to puff out and get some space in there. And so uh, I'll still do the Yosemite finish. It's also really nice just to get that tail out of your way. So that way you can clip and lead and, you know, do clove hitches or do whatever you want with the rope. So a lot of people still do this and I'll still do it. And uh, yeah, it's a great way to get the rope out of your way. Or in that bad habit of tying a mega long tail for your figure eight, doing a Yosemite finish, is also going to be annoying so some people tuck it down here but um, that's just again that's subtracting usable rope from the system that's not doing anything and it's just poor knot craftsmanship so it's just better to learn how to tie these knots well in the first place i mean this thing is protecting your life would you put on your harness sloppily everyone yells at people about having their leg loops flipped around but then people tie a crappy looking knot and then they're like yeah that seems fine to me so yeah, if I tie Yosemite finish, I try to keep the tail just like a little bit out of the knot. As far as the length of tail in general, um, if you were Swiss, you'd say 12 times the diameter of the rope, but I'm not that good at math. So I usually go for about this much tail, which is about, if I bend it over, it's just the length of the knot. Other places that you may have learned say two times the size of the knot, or they do hang loose or uh, dollar bills length. Um, just sort of go with whatever your gym tells you to do so that way you don't incite any revolutions but uh, me personally I like it a bit on the smaller side and then I also know a number of guides who actually prefer it even smaller than what I do I just try to keep it small enough that it's not in my way and uh, I will futz around with it while I'm uh, while I tie in to get the right knot length that I or tail length that I want something like that so that way I can just grab and clip. So will I ever tie a figure eight with that knot above it? Well, me personally, no, I will not because I practiced and I don't ever get that much tail, but will I ever like, are there, is there a time where you do want to tie that tail above your knot? And um, I actually have a friend that I was chatting with a while back and when he talks to his clients about it, he calls it a tail retention knot. <laughs> So that basically means that the knot's not doing anything other than controlling this tail. And um, that is exactly what you can use this knot for. If you're in the gym and you have like a pre-built figure eight or whatever, and you just want to like, you're tying in for that one top rope and you just want to get this out of your way, then yeah, you can still tie that knot. There's nothing wrong with doing it just to get the tail out of your way, but... Um, all the same rules apply. Make sure that knot is tight so that way it's not going to come undone on the climb. And then put primary focus in that figure eight. When you're doing your partner checks, only check the figure eight front and back. Don't bother checking this thing unless you're going to pull it a bit tighter. Well, guys, thanks for enjoying crotch view for me. Um, I can't believe that I just talked for like 10 minutes about the figure eight, right? But it does, 
I mean, like, it does make sense. You should spend a lot of time focusing on this knot because this is like the knot that you use in climbing. Every time you climb, you tie in with this knot, unless you boulder. So, um, boulders, you can skip to all my other bouldering videos. Yeah, as you can see, there's actually kind of a fair amount to unpack with this one. And there's a lot of, uh, like, kind of reasons why we've eventually stepped to this next uh level of understanding with our systems and we're ultimately streamlining them to make them easier for people to see so nowadays when i do bring up does anyone tie this sort of finisher knot after their original eight uh, like 90 percent of the people are like no never learned it that way and so it's nice that different schools are updating their systems uh thanks for watching the video to the end you can like, subscribe, you can add some comments about other arguments. I'd love to hear other reasons why we stopped doing this. Um, and then I'll see you guys in the next video. This is actually my first time climbing this route. It's called, uh, oh man, what's it called? It's not Infinite Bliss, uh, Endless Bliss. I can't believe I've lived in Washington for like a bunch of years and haven't climbed Endless Bliss yet. But uh, yeah, pretty fun. It's definitely worth coming out. Nice slippery 5.9.